Hey, sports fans, PBZ Sports Chaos. And we're literally like about two weeks away from our draft Survivor Fantasy. If you have not heard about it, you pick five players and then you're done. And oh, by the way, you get no one else to fill in. If you lose one of them, two of them, it doesn't matter. You're stuck with those five players regardless. That's why it's the best fantasy game in sports today. All right. Hey, we're going to roll out our goal line package today, PB. And you'll hear about what I mean by the goal line package one minute. But I got to give this shout out real quick. Congrats to a young lady down in Texas. She's playing in the Little League World Series. Her name, I believe is correct, is Ella Burning. She's the catcher, if I'm not mistaken, for Texas. Third girl ever to have two hits in a Little League World Series game. And you and I being girl dads, that's awesome, right? That is cool. By the way, speaking of the Little League World Series, another awesome thing. There's this kid, a lefty. Looks like Chris Seal, the way he throws the ball. His name is Gavin Weir from South Dakota. PB, the other night, Thursday, he pitched five and a third, no hit ball. He had 15 Ks. I'm not a rocket scientist, but if you pitch five and a third with 15 Ks, that means everybody but one person struck out, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And with theoretically, you can have more Ks than outs, too, because you can strike someone out, they could drop a third strike. And then oh, get- we saw that with the Sox two weeks ago against the Yanks where they had four Ks in one inning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there you go. By the way, this kid, I heard this the other day on ESPN. He's pitched 600 innings this summer leading up to the World Series. He's given up one hit. He's 12 years old. <laughs> Do you think scouts are watching? <laughs> I would think so. I think they're yeah. probably asking for his birth certificate. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. Hey, <laughs> speaking of big people, the goal line packets, I mentioned it earlier, the Yankees, they rolled off theirs the other night. Number one batter, Luke Voigt. He's a big boy. Anthony Rizzo, number two. Judge, number three. Judge is 6'7", 282. I didn't realize he weighed that much. Oh. Joey Gallo, another 6'4 guy. And Stanton, who's 6'7". They averaged a shade under 6'5 and 250 pounds. PB, here's a fact. They, they're bigger than the 68 Jets that won the uh, Super Bowl. That lineup. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine it? Oh, my God. It's hey. changed for sure over the years, right? Oh, God. that's, that's a, I can't even believe how big that is. Speaking of football, all right. I watched the pass Thursday night. They looked very impressive against the Eagles' JV. Yes, I said JV because Eagles had not one starter, I believe, in the game. But they looked very impressive. You know what? I got to admit, Cam Newton, he's starting to shock me a little. He actually threw the ball downfield exceptionally well. I believe he should start it. I think he should start until, like we said the other day, until they go on a losing streak or something. But right now, he's a start, in my opinion. Yeah. That's probably what's going to happen. I think after you, you, know, you get into those first three or four weeks of the season, obviously week four is against Tampa Bay for the Patriots. So if they go into that Tampa Bay game, one and two, or oh and three, they may break out Mac Jones. At the very worst, after that Tampa Bay game, we'll see where they're at. If they're, if they're two and two, Cam might hold on to his job. Maybe, maybe. If they're one and three... Mac Jones is coming in for sure at that point. And Probably, by the way, he looked he looked equally as impressive as well. And by just, the way, a know, guy, what were you gonna say? One, one other comment I just want to make, Z, is uh, you, you talked about the Philadelphia Eagles with the JV team because none of their starters were playing. I, I would say with their starters playing, they're still a JV team. That team, is, <laughs> <laughs> that team is. What cool. <laughs> PB always brings it, folks. He always does. Yes, zing to the Philly fans. I like it. Hey. By the way, I do have a concern, not for these teams, the Kansas City Chiefs. I know they won their game against the Cardinals, but the Patrick Mahomes thing is not going away. He still cannot step up in the pocket. And I will say this. I remember him at Texas Tech. He couldn't do it then either. That's why he slipped to number 10 in the draft behind Mitchell Trubisky. He just does not step up, and he can't survive his career running backwards. You can't run 400 yards backwards in the game in the NFL and win. Right, that's a good point. I mean, when you look at him from a, a pure athleticism standpoint, one of the best, not going to argue that for a second. And the arm on the kid is ridiculous. But when you look at, you know, Hall of Fame and longevity in the NFL, you, you, you're not going to survive, to your point, running around like that. And, and there's only so many years you can actually run around like that. Um, so I'm not sure what that's going to look like in the long term. And, you know, not only do you have the inability to step up, but also he might even have some, I wonder, if there's some Super Bowl backlash going on 
and and just being afraid. Remember Babe Brady had that one year when he had the ghost. There were ghost people rushing him. He was yeah, like, yeah. by the way, nobody was even there. Um, so that gets into your head psychologically too. So he might have to work through a few games this year to get past that. It's a good point, but I, I, I've seen it. I saw him in Texas Tech playing against Oklahoma. He did the same thing. He just doesn't step up. And, you know, you, you got to trust your, your line at some point in time. So, all right, moving on. Let's talk about the AFC South, because at one point in time, this was going to be a very competitive division. But now, of course, we have the injury to Carson Wentz in Indianapolis and their offensive lineman there, Nelson. We got Deshaun Watson and his affinity for masseuses, apparently, that he does not like to – do the right thing with you got urban meyer and his total lack of nfl knowledge there's only one it's a one horse pony it's it's the tennessee titans in my mind so let's start out with them they added yeah. julio jones speaking of the goal line package aj brown julio jones derrick henry they're the biggest of their positions in the nfl for crying out loud right so let's talk about them. what do you think yeah this team is good and yeah and, and tana hell is an underrated quarterback as well um in the nfl i think he's potentially a top 10 quarterback in the league um, and, and you're right. I think this is a league of the haves and have nots. Um, and Tennessee is one of the haves. Um, I, I may make an argument that, you know, Indy could find their way into a decent record this year. I know we'll be talking about them soon, but, um, you know, Tennessee schedule, not too bad. Uh, no. Vegas, Vegas only has them at nine wins. I, I saw that. I, I, I like mean, that. I like that over a lot because, Again, you put a bet that because the worst thing that can happen is they do win nine and you push your bet. You don't lose any money. Yeah. They win 10 or 11 games, you you win. And the only way you could lose that bet is by the team literally going under 500 and going eight and nine. How the hell is that going to happen? Right. I, I just do not see that happen. To me, that's an easy bet all day long in Vegas. Take the over on the Tennessee uh, nine. When, when you got Jacksonville and you got uh, the Texans in your division, there's a pretty good shot you got maybe four right. guaranteed wins. Yeah. You're going to, yeah. You're probably going to win those four games. Um, I got them at 11 and six. Um, there are some, you know, games on their schedule. They got Buffalo and Kansas city in weeks five and six back to back. Right. Well, well hey, well, let's talk about, they got from week six to 10 Buffalo KC at the Colts. By that point in time, Carson should be back according to the schedule at the Rams, then the saints. That's, That's a, a tough, tough stretch. Schedule. That's a tough stretch in the middle of the schedule for sure. Um, but all in all, I mean, they got they got San Francisco later in the year. That's at home. You know, they got to go up to New England. Um, they open up against Arizona, and then they got to go to Seattle. That's not that's not a guaranteed two and zero start there either. So this team could lose some games, but I don't see them losing more than that six games. And I got them at eleven and six. I got them at twelve and five, and I think the worst case is is ten and seven. And you just mentioned it. I think it's uh, Seattle and San Fran. That's probably, you know, the differentiator. And you already have them. It sounds like Seattle losing that game. So that gives you your six. But yeah. I think they're 12 and five in worst case, 10 and seven, but to your point, over the nine and a half number. Yeah. Yep. All right. Let's go to Indy. Speaking of tough stretches. So they got the starting guard, Nelson, I forget his first name. And they got Carson Wentz out for maybe two to six games, depending on how their rehab goes. They got murderers row. We just talked about the top five in the Yankees lineup. Their first five games are unbelievable, right? Yeah. Seattle Rams at Tennessee, at Miami, at Baltimore. Then they got to give me at home against Houston, but then they got to go to San Francisco and then they got Tennessee after that. So you look at their first, what's that? Two, four, six. Eight, eight games. Yeah. There's only one guaranteed win in there. They uh, could be one in seven after the first eight games. They could be, but you know what? They'll, they'll find a way to win some of those games just based on their, you know, offensive and defensive lines. As we said, you know, as a, as a whole unit, they're, they're both lines are probably tops in the NFL. Right. And they have, you know, Jonathan Taylor, who I, who I think is going to be a, just a stud back this year. Um, they do have some decent receivers, not sold on Wentz. I, I've never been a Wentz fan. Um, they'd say he's on track to return. He could even return week one. They're talking potentially. I don't know if that's going to really happen. But either way, with or without Wentz, I don't think this team has a quarterback. Um, Wentz is not the answer. He's not. A, he's not going to take this team into the deep into the playoffs if they even make the playoffs. Right. So um, while I do agree that this team fundamentally can control the clock, they can run the ball. They have a good offensive line. They got a decent defense. They picked up uh, Quiddy Pay out of Michigan, and number twenty-one pick overall defensive end. That's going to improve that pass rush too. Um, but still. Hard fought, hard fought, 10 and seven, maybe for this team, but 
more likely what you're looking at nine and eight, I think. That's what I got them at nine and eight. I just, and, and to your point, Wentz is not the answer. And that's why they go nine and eight, I think at the end of the day. So 10 and seven, you're, you're a little more kind than I am, but all right. Yeah. Speaking of kind, let's talk about Jacksonville Jaguars because unfortunately, even though they have the number one pick sunshine, sunshine won't be bringing the sunshine to the sunshine state this year anyways trevor lawrence i'm sorry dude i love you you're a great great college quarterback i think you'll be a great pro but it ain't happening what do you think here yeah i mean i do have this team finishing ahead of houston which uh <laughs> tells you how I bad do too yes <laughs> um but and i think vegas has this team a little too high on their under they have them at six and a half so here's a here's another thing i think you can lay some money on that under because to lose that bet, Jackson would have to win seven games and go seven and ten, folks. They're not a seven and ten team. Um, I got them coming in at four and thirteen, actually. Um, you know, despite Trevor, despite Travis at the end at um, running back, their rookie out of Clemson, I like him. I think they yep. did a nice job picking up uh, Tyson Campbell, uh, first pick in the second round, cornerback out of Georgia. You know, they made some good picks. This team is some a team that you'll watch out for in the next two to three years as a potential candidate to make a wild card spot for a playoff, but not yet. Not this year. Um, four and 13 for this team. PB, I got them worse. I got them at three and 14. And the wild card to me is, I don't know, Urban, Urban Meyer has done a lot of good things in college, but he's done it the urban way. And you can't do it the urban way in the NFL. So I don't know that they can win with him as a head coach. To me, the only games they possibly will win, you said the Houston games, maybe Denver, maybe the Bengals, and maybe the Falcons or the Jets. But that's the only winnable games I see for them. Yeah, I agree. All right, All right let's move on to who will definitely be in the cellar without a doubt. The yeah. Houston Texans. Can you believe this team was a playoff team, what, two years ago? I know. Uh, they were a perennial playoff team. They had Perennial, the yes! They yes. made the playoffs like five, six years in a row or something like that. Now, they were winning that division every single year, but they would be pretty much one and done every time. But they, and, that, and everybody said Bill O'Brien was a schmuck, but at least he got them there. Yeah, but, but and that's when team, the South was just a horrible, one of the worst divisions in football for many, many years. So Houston kind of lucked out and just got the benefit of that. Now, um, I feel bad because they're stuck with this Deshaun mess because – they yeah. can't trade him. No one wants to take the guy right well, now, right? How can you take him? You don't know what you're getting. So, and yeah. certainly Houston's not going to play him because they can't put up with the, you know, the, the fan down slot, you know, they're going to get from it. So, right, what do you right. think? So, so how do you a, see them ending? As a result of that, they may get their their third round uh, draft pick quarterback out of Stanford, Davis Mills. He might get get some action this year at quarterback, given the situation there. Um, you know, I know they tried to make some other offensive moves, getting, um, you know, wide receiver Nico Collins out of Michigan, uh, also in the third round. And they grabbed Jenkins, the um, uh, I'm sorry, Brevin Jordan, the uh, tight end out of Miami, the U. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fifth round. So they made some decent picks on offense, but they, they just don't have what it takes to, to win football games right now. Um, defense is very, very suspect. Offenses could be in, in disarray. I mean, they lost J.J. Watt, the heart and soul of the franchise. He took off, yeah. right? Went to the Cardinals. Yeah, and then add on to that, their schedule. I mean, it's – I don't see this team winning many games. I, I have them at 3-14, and 14, finishing a game behind Jacksonville, but th those three wins are going to be hard to come by. I wouldn't be surprised if this team wins one or two games this year. They will be the worst team in the NFL um, this season. I agree. I got them at 2-15. and 15. The, only, the only possible games – Obviously the Jags, Carolina, Jets, and I'm I'm not sold on the Cards, but it is in Arizona, so we'll see. But other than that, there's no winnable game for them. They they're done. And I this mean, is a team that beat this. This is a team that beat the Patriots last year, right? Yes, they beat the, yes. the Chiefs too last year. What's that? They beat the Chiefs too last year. No, the Raiders beat the Chiefs. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, so I don't know. All right. Yeah. We got one more division to go. We got Tommy Boy's division coming up on Wednesday night. We'll give you that preview and we'll wrap up our divisional previews for the year a week before our fantasy draft. Emily, where are you? You haven't responded yet. You're the defending champ, you chicken. Come on out. Because as <laughs> we know, the only people that win in fantasy are golfers and people who didn't play football. So, Emily, you have a good shot. 
<laughs> well, and then we have to look forward also to our, um, you know, NFL prediction show. We got to do our college prediction show. Yes. So we got a couple of good shows coming up here in the next uh, few weeks. Can't wait, man. All right. PB, have a good rest of your weekend. I'm going to go stay away from the hurricane. <laughs> All right. All right. Bye. All right. See you.